Hey guys, welcome back to the Q&A show. Question number one. You guys already know how this goes. Question number one, how do you price yourself? Uh, this is kind of a hard question and I know this is, it's a question I've been getting a lot lately, usually from people from New Zealand or creatives and they kind of fall into the same category because they're sort of too scared to ask for a price. So creatives, they're kind of like, everyone sort of knows a creative. They think their their work's going to speak for themselves. They got photography, they got video editing. But a lot of them don't really have business now. So, and I, really can, I feel like in business, you need a bit of both. If you're not like kind of in the middle, you need to find someone that's sort of business orientated or super creative. So creative people, they don't have business now. So they, they don't know about business development, marketing, sales, and all this sort of stuff where someone that's strictly business, they don't really have that creative side. They're only kind of chasing sales. And um, I feel like to have a balance is super important. And if you are super creative in your business, I feel like it's good to find someone who's business now or someone who's got a bit of business marketing background or just something like that. But how do you price yourself? I'm only going to go off past experiences. So when we started YKTR, I think our very first T-shirts printed off the back of AS Color ones were like $35. And I remember someone like because we only sold to our friends at the start, like, oh, how much is a t-shirt? <laughs> like $35. And everyone's like, hey, for this, for this shit thing. <laughs> and that's kind of how it was at the start. And we used to just go, oh yeah, $35. And I used to feel bad asking my friends for product. And that's something sort of changed over the course of my business career. I've been going about two and a half years now, three years. Um, that's something that's really, really changed. And uh, I used to feel bad asking my friends for money for a product that I was giving them in exchange. And I'm big on this, like if your friend's starting a business or um, someone's taking the courage to start a business and you don't pay full price or you don't support them, you're kind of a piece of shit. That's just my opinion. If you're asking for a discount straight away and you don't have a positive ROI in terms of branding, in terms of having a bit of leverage, in terms of followers or something like that, I just feel like, yeah, probably not the type of people you kind of want to be hanging around with, even after they are your friends and family. And that's just how we've been brought up, especially in New Zealand. From a cultural aspect, and I know I'm, I can only speak on my culture or how I've grown up, you don't ask people for money or they're like, oh, give me a discount. Oh, we're family. You should be giving me a discount. So there's this weird little conversation that you got to have with your family members and saying like, hey, I'm trying to start something here. Um, I can appreciate, oh, I hope you guys can support me in doing so. And a lot of people are scared to say, say that and have that conversation. But after a while, it becomes a great exercise to have because – at the start, we used to give away nothing for free or no discounts or anything like that. Like, if you want to buy it, like, you can buy it. If not, we'll find someone that, that will. And it's weird when you start saying no to people, you sort of find out who they really are or if they're really your friends. And probably outside of football, I've probably got, from my football days, I've probably got eight, eight close friends that I know that they're going to message me and not ask me for shit. And it's kind of sad because I played at a few clubs Everyone else that I know play for, through playing football, they kind of just want shit from me. So, um, yeah, probably about eight. No, probably about six, six or seven friends that I've played football with outside of football that don't really want shit from me. But the question is how to price yourself. And I've done this in a few numerous, few different ways. Right now, I price my time at a point where I can't say no to. And I heard Naval say this, sort of talked about, like, when you price yourself, price, spend put an hourly price on something. And if they don't meet that, just don't do it. And here's an example. So when people used to hit me up for consulting, I used to go, oh, it's $300 an hour. It's probably a bit more now. I'll say $500 an hour, but there's a minimum of two hours. So my pricing on myself is $1,000. If people don't reach that, I just don't do it. And here's an example. Virgin Active come through. They see my video when I was doing the kettlebell things. So, oh, we love your content. We'd love you to come um, make some content for us. And they go, oh, we'll, we'll give you 250 to $300. And in my mind, I go, oh, I'll go there, film it, cutting, editing, it's going to pay six, seven hours. It just didn't match up. So if it's not if it's not over $1,000, personally, I won't do it. But let's look at it on a smaller scale. And I used to be scared to ask for stuff as well. So I remember one time someone come through for a video and he goes, how much is it? And I didn't really want to do it. And I go, $2,000. And he goes, like, I would have done it for cheaper. And he goes, oh, we'll do it for 1500 You don't have to be here for 30 minutes. Boom, done it. So I priced it at a point where I couldn't say no to. And I know not everyone's going to be in that position, uh, but I was at the time. But the way you should price yourself is, um, I feel like you should, test, you should test the market a lot. So say you're a photographer, go, oh, like, and three people ask you for your price. Say you go, oh, 300 and then 400 and 500 So you just ask different different people like that and you could just, you see where the kickback is like oh shit so they definitely said no they said maybe so maybe my pricing points around that 350 until you can establish leverage and actually a disclaimer i do encourage people to do stuff for people for free 
Luke's an example of this. Um, he made me a bunch of content for free, never asked me for shit. Where other people would make content for me, and like, oh, send us a free hat, or send us something, or give me a shout out. And it, it kind of got annoying, so, but he was the one that never really asked me for anything. And it kind of just stuck with me, and he works for us now. So that's how, that's how powerful working for someone for free is. But once you get to a point, you'll realise that everyone wants shit from me for free. People want free clothes from me, consulting from me. Um, people want to take me for a coffee for two hours to pick my brain. Like, it just doesn't add up. So don't be afraid to say your price. And, I'm, and the example I gave is, like, when you go to McDonald's and you go through the drive-thru and, like, can I get a Big Mac combo? They don't go, uh, and I, I, I don't have to go there and go, oh, what's the price? Like, they tell me, whatever it is, we'll say it's 10 bucks. So Big Mac combo, yep, sweet, that's $10. And you just sort of go up where if I went up to there and they go, like, you know what, we just got the buns yesterday. They're a bit more fresh than normal. Uh, meat patties, premium beef. Got it from down the line. You know what I mean? It just, it just if you got, just imagine that experience. Or if you go for a coffee and they start going, uh, beans are, beans are from, I don't know, Africa. Uh, they've been, you know what I mean? Like, just say your price. And then if you get a kickback, that's it. Like that, that you probably realize that's not your price. And you got to f- try and figure out where it is. But one thing I found is important is just to have a sheet straight of there straight away. So if someone inbox me, just an example for advertising on this podcast space. I'm like, yep, here's my email. Boom, send it through straight away. And it was sort of kind of just a one page thing. Like, yeah, here's my price. And what I've found, and you guys will understand, is the power of the negotiation is in the hands of the person that cares less. Like, I'm happy to walk away from deals, or I'm happy to walk away from like it's like. Say the Virgin Active one, they're going to give me three, three to five hundred for a video. I'm happy to walk away from that because I don't care. Like I, I can make that money somewhere else. So um, if you think of a relationship, especially at the start when you're young and you're a guy and you don't really care, you know, you know what I mean? You kind of got the power of the relationship because you care less. And it's the same sort of thing in um, the same sort of thing in negotiating price. If you don't care, if you don't genuinely need them, you usually got the power. And I found that with um, even like when we we're looking for office space and real estate, and because I was so keen on this office space, they could have said any price. I would have gone, yep, yep, yep. But then if I didn't really care, I probably could have margined it down a lot cheaper. So uh, that's my thoughts on price and how to price yourself. Make sure you do have a price and make sure, like, search the market, um, understand where you lie, don't overprice yourself out of the market too much, but negotiate with different people just say different prices i say different prices all the time how much for a consulting session on a 300 an hour and if they say if too many people say yes it's probably too low and then if i go oh thousand dollars an hour if no one says no it's probably too high so that's what i do um i don't know i don't i don't have a background in this but don't be don't be scared to say your price and the power of the negotiation is in the hands of the person that cares less uh, question number two, how do you get out of your low patches? So I sort of put up a post last night talking about right now I'm kind of like really agitated, like the smallest things piss me off, I'm so tired, um, I kind of just want to go home and sleep and do all that sort of vibe and I talk about it because I don't feel like too many people talk about those phases of entrepreneurship and it's not like a mental health type thing, like it's not a cry for help, it's more just documenting my journey. And I kind of went to a yoga session last week and just said, she just kept going, listen to your body, listen to your body. And I come out of it and probably for about four or five days, I was, I was fucked, you know what I mean? Um, I'm starting to come out of it now. But the way I get out of it is I go back to do, do, doing the things that I enjoy. Like I'll shorten, I'll shorten my work day and I know not everyone can do this. Like Monday I was here for two hours. I went home, um, started listening to Gary Vee again because he's a guy that gets me going. Um, went to the gym, done a 30 minute workout. I'm going for a walk this afternoon. And usually it ties around pulling back to one having rest. It's like fucking sleeping because I'm not that good of a, I'm not that the best sleeper. Um, I have to have noise in the background for me to fall asleep. I sleep better on a couch than I do in the bed. Um, I get up early. I get up about five thirty, six o'clock most mornings. So um, I, my sleeping pattern ain't that great. So uh, over the course of like I'll go through periods where I'll go, I'll work every day for six weeks, seven weeks. I've done it this year. And then all of a sudden I'll just go bang and I just hit this wall. And like the smallest thing could piss me off. Like <laughs> like small stuff, you know what I mean? Stuff that would normally never phase me. Would like Someone would ask me a question like, what, what, what equipment do you use? And because I've said it about 150 times, and but this guy doesn't know that. I'm just like, fuck, surely Google. So that's, that's the sort of phase I'm in right now where I'm fucked, but I'm coming out of it because I know how to get out of it. One, sleep more. I don't have to be at work every day. Uh, two, start exercising again. I ate a healthy meal last night. I don't know if it's placebo. I fucking feel great today. Um, and Gary V's my guy. 
Like he's the one that gets me going. Um, it's kind of it was kind of hard at the start because I, I mirrored his work ethic so much. It, it really fucked me because I was doing like doing those 15, 16 hour days. I don't know how productive they were, but I got a kick out of just saying I was in the office for like fifteen hours or. All that sort of shit. Then I started listening to a guy named Naval. He goes, smart business people should be able to double their revenue in half the time. So that's where sort of my mindset is at right now. I'm trying to be as effective as possible, but with, with, with less amount of work. And then you can do stuff that you love, like whether it's reading, whether it's exercising, whether it's playing basketball. Like, I don't know, but yeah, I feel like that's the way to go. Like work smarter, not harder. Uh, question number three, is there anything you would change if you started your business again? Yeah. Oh, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's a great thing to look back and go, I would have done this different. Uh, my first I'll say no, because then you get to the point by going through these struggles and all that sort of stuff. But And then the other one, I'll say yes. So if you are starting your business, I'll try and find mentors straight away or try and find someone who's done what you've done and um, just figure out how to get in front of them. Um, that's, a hard, that's a hard thing because the more successful the person is, usually the busier they are. Usually, like for me, example, I don't really take meetings with people anymore. Um, just had so many people offering me meetings, but I was get there and just they weren't offering anything. So I kind of just come in here and do my own thing. Um, yeah, mentors, maybe online courses, Google, right? Online course on whatever you want to do. There's probably one out there. Uh, I still got to do mine. Yeah, I think mentors is the big one. I remember sitting down at a meeting in the city and uh, I read about it in a blog one time and it, I called it like. I remember paying eighty dollars for the parking ticket, and I was filthy. But as I was driving home, I was like, I learned so much in that meeting over that eighty dollar ticket that I changed my business structure the whole day. I learned about like the basic business triangle of like sales and marketing, of operations, of finance and accounting. So like something small like that, like get yourself a good accountant, um, get yourself a good accountant, deal with the operations, and you can focus on sales and marketing. Something as small as hearing that from someone else, I'm like shit. And then he gave me the goal, like, you should have an office, um, you need a higher staff, you need to scale out from there, and that's how you scale your business out. So even hearing stuff like that from people that have done it before was massive because I was guilty of trying to do everything on my own and, like, I wouldn't let Normie or Chico, like, pick designs or, like, they wouldn't help me pack anyway, but, like, I just, like, I only trusted myself and it wasn't until I got Natasha in where I relinquished some of that, where, like, I had these little trust issues where I felt like I needed to do everything. Um, so yeah, those are, those are sort of the lessons. Like if I started again, I'd find mentors straight away and try and get in front of them. Um, just learn, learn, learn online courses, books, all that sort of stuff. Like nothing new. Like I'm not gonna give you groundbreaking fucking news here or um, ideas for your business to grow quicker. That's another one. Not try and grow so quick. That's a that should be a goal. But the analogy that I think of and I see it a lot of times, like I like. People that play golf, like I don't play golf, um, I'm rubbish. But like, I see people buy brand new golf clubs instead of taking golf lessons. Like that right there is weird to me. So people like will start a business, never don't know how to market, but they'll spend five thousand dollars on clothes and spend no money on education. <laughs> For me, that's a weird mix up. It just doesn't work. Like you'd rather you'd rather say say you had five thousand dollars, I'd rather spend two and a half thousand dollars on education. And then spend that two and a half on a smaller, like not as much stock, but learn how to sell. Like for me, that makes sense. The same with the golf analogy. I'd rather spend how much golf, I don't know how much golf clubs are. Say golf clubs are $2,000 or there's a golf thing over here that's $50 an hour. Like to me, that makes sense. That's 40 lessons that you can have from a professional golfer or some brand new clubs and still swinging it your same shit way. So that's how, that's how I see life. I see life as... Like learning, learning the art, and then trying to sell the product after. People go the other way around. They load up on the product, but don't know how, don't know the art. So that's just my opinion. Find mentors, read books, online courses, same shit, different day. Let's go.